Hey there guys, and welcome back to NIMBY Rails. I finished building the Northern Line off camera, so I thought it would be good to try signalling it with the new 1.2 signals, which I've now learned. Um, this is my second attempt at recording this, because the first time I opened up the menu to find that the path signal has been added since I last played the game. I now understand how the path signal works. So I've done a bit of testing down by Morden, and I think that there are two main ways to set up a line. I've done, I've signalled Morden to Collier's Wood and I've used the block signals along the main stretches of track. This effectively just splits track where there's no points into blocks so that trains can't enter the same block as another train. The alternative is to just put down a block release uh, after the signals and now after this point we just go back to the same method of routing as 1.1 used. A train won't crash into the back of another train, it will just stop in time. Um, it kind of depends, like the block police obviously allows you to place less signals, which I can understand the benefit of. But if you're placing path signals at every junction anyway, and there's a lot of junctions around the network, I'm not sure why that would necessarily be a good thing. The block signal on the other hand, is more accurate to real life. However, obviously, you end up then wanting to put them in the right place, and I have no idea where the signals go, so I've just kind of guessed. I've gone for roughly equal distances. However, then we also have the new path signal. And this, instead of if I'd had a block signal here, if I just add a block signal in quickly to show what it would do. If I have a block signal here, it covers all of that. If there is any train in any of that section, a train cannot come in. Which isn't ideal, because if you've got a train coming out of platform A, going up the main line, and, and a train coming into platform EF, they don't hit each other, but the signal wouldn't allow it. Hence, we have the path signal, which allows a train provided the path it is on is clear, So, and it also checks the station. <laughs> because it paths past this one, given I've set it to only for same direction limits path. If I set it for always, it wouldn't path past it. But I set it for only for same direction. I set this one for always because I need to stop the path for trains coming out. Trains shouldn't be routing up the right-hand line anyway. And actually, I can fix that as well. I can make certain of that by putting in some one-way signals quickly. And actually, some one-way signals here would not go amiss. There we go. That fixes that issue. But it was worth... It's, it's worth just making sure it can't route the wrong way. Because this signal will still route paths past one-way signals that are going the other, other direction. So, it's worth just double-checking. I think I'm going to signal the line with block signals, at least for the underground. It just feels like it makes sense. Oh, I am going to double check. Did I remove that release? Yes, I did. Yeah, it just feels like it makes sense for the underground to, to be signalled with block signals. Which is weird, because the underground doesn't actually, at least the northern line especially, doesn't actually have signals. Um, the trains are automatically driven, and... The driver just opens the doors. So they do just stop before they hit the next train. However, it feels more accurate to have signals even though it's less accurate. Hence, signals. I mean, in reality, actually, this is... No, I, I've changed my mind. Um, I think on the main line, when I get around to signalling the main line that I've built so far, I am going to do um, block signals. However, I've just deleted the um, platform stop points. It's not ideal. However, for now, it's a matter of I know that I'm meant to be running 20 trains an hour down here and I'd have to put the signals incredibly frequently to actually be able to run that frequency of service. So I think for National Rail it will be a different matter, but 
on the underground. I think releases might be better. It will be a bit different in different places on the underground. Um, the I'll just put release there. There we go. Because say I don't know. Um, so the end of the Metropolitan Line where Shilton is sharing the track, that's effectively then National Rail. That will be signalled. Um, Richmond to Gunnersbury will be signalled because that's got London Overground on it. But for the pure underground line, I think just block releases is the better bet. So then we start coming in here, we've got a junction, so we're going to have path signals. We're going to have a path signal out of here, and a release off there, a path signal off there. We're going to have another path signal down here, and one here. We're going to have a release. And a path signal. And a release. Then I'm also going to have a release there just so that the loop is not signalled until we get back round to here. Now then, time to double check how these paths work. So that works as intended. This needs to be only for same direction limit. I think the others being always works fine. There we go, that seems to work. <laughs> then, as we, we were back on releases at this point, I've got to go up the bank branch first. We're back on automatic signalling and we stay on automatic signalling through to somewhere else. Well, the next junction isn't up until... Um, well, there will be one between Kings Cross and Euston. There's a branch off onto one of the other lines, but I don't have that yet. So the next junction isn't until Camden Town. This is going to be interesting to signal. So, I want path signals. There and there. And I want releases on the two outbound lines. I think... Let's see... Probably around here. Then I want release to turn off the signalling there and there. Inbound path signals in those two slots. And I think that would be it. So if I then just double check by say I've selected that signal, it's got the route up to the two releases, also got the route to the two releases. This one has to the two outbounds, and that one's got to the two outbounds. So that seems to all work fine. Doesn't seem to be a lot of interference there. Maybe if I add more path signals in as well, that might help me. No, I don't. I don't think it's worth that, that effort. Actually, I think that should be enough signals. Okay, then we're back on automatic. I'll continue up the right. The next junction isn't up until East Finchley, and the other side of East Finchley, for that matter. We have a path signal out of both platforms path signal off there and a path signal off there. This one needs to be, I keep clicking the wrong edit, this needs to be only for same direction. Then we need release at the outbound and into the two platforms. Then we double check all the pathing, that's fine. That's now fine. <laughs> and that's fine. Yeah, I kind of possibly want that by no I don't think I do want it by directional platform. Um, let's see quickly. I want to add one way arrows. That needs flipping. Let me let me flip you. Flip. 
I just want to go back and add some one way arrows elsewhere, I think. Um, got them there. I'll just add some more in here quickly. One of those needs turning round. Um, come down to Camden Town. Up, down, up, down. Then over here we've got up, up, down, down. That should do it. And we'll do it down at Kennington as well. This is one way that way. One way that way, that way. Up, up, down, down. That's an up. I need to change it. Flip. Cool. Now then, uh, just to consider the Charing Cross branch has no junctions on it, so doesn't need any signals until we've already done Camden Town. How far did I get? I got to East Finchley. I believed the outbound. Although, having said that, I've also got this to do. Which we're going to police the outbound of. I'm going to treat this as a ability to do a turnaround, which means I need to move this arrow up to here. Add in a new one there. And add in the ability to have an outbound like so. This police needs to be down here. As does this one. These arrows go the other side of those polices. We have another signal there. And both of these signals are only for same direction limits. So this signal will allow routing into the stations as that one. This one allows out. This needs to be only for same direction. It's making bi-directional routing a little easier now. So there we go. It allows routing onto the main line. I think having a signal up here might be helpful for it. Um, only for the same direction, and maybe more in both directions as well. All of that's liable to cause more of an issue. Yeah, I think maybe maybe just those. Like that won't cause any issues because this signal can only route into this section if it's not being routed into by one of these two. It's not ideal because that really limits capacity, but oh well. I think capacity here should be ten trains an hour, I think. Although maybe it is twenty. Who knows? Anyway, continuing on, we're back on the Belize now. Of course, we're straight up to Finchley Central, we need to go off the Belize again. Um, have a path signal there, path signal out of the station. Can we reverse out of the middle platform? I'm going to say no. Signal there. I'm just going to put some one way arrows in. Need a path signal out of the siding, which needs to be. Only for same direction. We need a block release as we leave the, uh, the junction, a path signal as we enter, path signal here and here and here and there. <laughs> this is getting a bit, little complicated now. Uh, there, there. This needs to be, because again it's a siding, only for the same direction. Then I want a signal out of there. I think. And a signal in. How does that work? 
Does that look okay? That's got a root. That's got a root. This has many roots that I'm not happy about. I think some one-way arrows just to make doubly certain here. There we go. Right. Continue checking. It's it's this line in particular I'm, I'm having issues with. Like how many ways you can go in places. But in theory it can only root out like this. Up to F. Um... Yeah, I'm not sure really about bringing this off the signalling. I'm thinking maybe path would be better. Well, realistic block would be better, but path is what I've chosen to use. Um, that can be all on one, one section. It doesn't need a belise because it's single track. But coming up here, we're back off. I think we went over a belise, yeah. So nothing until High Barnet, where I've not even got a crossover in place. Let's um, let's just add that quickly. I really did not put a lot of effort into High Barnet Station. Clearly, when I got to building Edgeware off camera, I actually put in the depot and everything. All right, crossover done. Signals have a path signal. Have a path signal out of each platform. The path signals out of the platforms need to be only for the same direction. And then we need a release here. And that should allow everything to work fine. Cool. That's that branch done. Now we just have to go up the other branch, which is also on releases at this point. Um, actually, I, I do want to check quickly in High Barnet, adding in some one-way arrows just to make sure. Okay, other direction: Chalk Farm, Bellsize Park, Hampstead Heath, and then Golders Green is where we need to start being a bit complicated. So, path signal out. Uh, block police this way. I have no idea what to do with this depot. <laughs> uh, we're going to have a path signal out of those two platforms and into that one. I'm tempted to move this this way. Another path signal down here and here and not there, but there. And Belize. And this one needs to be only for the same direction because we need to boot in the other direction. This one also needs to be only for the same direction. So then we can boot in like that. I need signals in each of the sidings in the middle for, again, only for the same direction. And here as well, although this is a less than practical position for a signal to be in because you can't go out that way at all. Um, did I never finish off that bit of line? I'm sure someone has noticed that and put it in the comments by this point. That's uh, awkward. Let's just bring the track up. There we go. Build all blueprints. Again, six. I've got the police in already. Let's put the one way signals in. Path signal there and up here. And out of each track. And there, there. There and there. Now, each of these needs to be um, only the same direction. So, this is complicated. Well, it's not. It's not complicated at all. It's 
consuming, time consuming. But it's almost done, and we've almost finished the line, and then we can set up some services. Setting up services are much more involved process than it was before because you have to make sure the signaling is set up first. It's why currently on my rebuild the only service set up is the island line because it only has all of like six signals to run the entire line. Okay, only for same direction. You should all be working fine now. You should be working fine routing out everywhere. This middle signal should be able to route everywhere it needs to. So I think we're okay. It was a little complicated to set that up. And again, the throughput of this yard is not brilliant. But I think we're going to have to accept it. What I might do is just add on two signals like that. I'll I don't know if they need to be or not, but I'm going to put them as only for same direction limits. Only for same direction. I do want to see how's that going to work. That will let you route pretty much everywhere. Hmm. I. But realistically, it's only going to be allowed to route down here, so it's not a major issue. What I am going to say is probably we want a one-way arrow there and there, at the very least. Okay, carrying on, we've gone out on the block police, have some one-way arrows, and then nothing again for a little bit up, well, all the way to Edgeware, in effect. More arrows, and more signals. Signal in, police out, and signal out of every platform set to only the same direction and hopefully that is then the signaling done if I have a quick look at the paths off this signal yeah that seems to work well it's, mm, it's not the signaling done because I have to still signal this yard so I guess a signal there there and then out of each track, maybe. That needs turning around, that'll be fine. These ones down here and there. Then again, each needs changing to only the same direction. I might uh, cut this bit out. Okay, the signaling is all done. So now it's time to set up some routes. Um, we're going to make the colour black, copy the colour. It's a bit of a time since I've set up a route. Uh, it might have changed again. The the beta is having fun with changing routes. So my my name convention was LUN for London Underground Northern. I'm going to start with Edgeware to Kennington. Uh, again, I've got to once again going to have to guess at the uh, three letter codes because they're not actual stations in the system. What price did I go with? I did change to ten and 0 0.05 in the end. We'll, uh, we'll keep to that. Okay, I so I'm starting at Edgeware. Let's start out of platform C. Why not? And we're driving on the left now. Which is a massive improvement on before. We can drive on the right side. Um, the the game still puts the line on the right of the track, which isn't ideal, but can't be too fussy. Uh, we're going to Kennington via Charing Cross, and the Charing Cross branch is the one that does stop at Mornington Crescent. So there we go. We need platform A at Euston, then E at Warren Street, A at Good Street, C at Tottenham Court Road. E at Leicester Square, W at Charing Cross, K at Embankment, G at Waterloo. Waterloo is getting getting to be a mess now. It re-lettered all of the platforms when I put in all the underground platforms. So we've now got up to like BJ, BK and BL. 
It's getting excessive there. What's it all with there? I have no idea. Um, uh, so that's Waterloo, then Kennington, then the other way at Kennington. And what's it? It's not compelling about anything really. And back up we go. Through Embankment, Chan Cross. Yeah, so as you zoom in, the line is sort of becomes one line for a bit because it can't really decide how to deal with the fact that I'm making it drive on the left. But I can make it drive on the left. That's the thing. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I can. It's really, yeah, it's really difficult to see what's going on with the line overlay on left-hand drive. But I'm making do. How is it routed through there? I think it has routed correctly, which is somewhat of a miracle, honestly. Um, it's a bit of a shame, really, that like the in regular service, the Northern Line doesn't terminate early anywhere except Kennington. It, it never uses Edgware, uh, no, not Edgware, Golders Green or Finchley East as a terminating place. Like, the Bakerloo uses Stonebridge Park and Queens Park and pretty much anywhere it can get hold of. But Switching there, I'd rather you switched over here, honestly. After the first extra, I'd rather you went across there. Thank you. Okay. Now we buy a train. I decided I was going to use the 1992 stock on here. And if I set it a nice red colour... Don't copy it. There we go. That looks vaguely like the other. It's not got any of the blue, but apart from that, and I make it as long as I can, which is six cars. I think technically Northern uses seven, but and we buy one to begin with. I didn't ask you to use. Please don't use line color. Um, right, that's one. Then we have to work out, yeah, use that as the cruise speed, minimum stop time I want to be 30 seconds, you're the underground so it needs to be reasonably quick, but interval time, I'd really love to be, it's 10 an hour so I'd love the interval time to be every 6 minutes. The problem now is actually getting that to work. Because I don't know how long the line takes to run. I've forgotten how to sort this out now. So maybe if I set that back to auto. Oh no, oh, it does set here. Okay, so if I say 6 minutes. I, I temporarily lost it, but it does set here. <laughs> Hour 22. So 0, 6, 12, 20, uh, 18, 24, 30, 36, 48, 2, 48, 54, hour, hour 6, hour 12, hour 18. We need 14 trains, so if I clone it 13 times. Uh, 13. That should successfully run the correct interval, hopefully. If I set it back to auto, yes, it's now autoing to an interval of 5.52, but I want 6 minutes. Uh, interval wait at first stop. That's fine. You should start running. Oh, no, I have to, yeah, I remember I have to open the line. That's another stage I have to take now. Here we go, the train. I can, because there's barely anything. Speed up the game a bit. So we can see what's going on now. The first train is already down at Collindale. Picking up passengers. The platforms are just long enough. If, if they weren't, I know I made them long enough for the train, it was just a matter of if the platform stop marker would need moving, but it, it doesn't quite, which is nice because that would have been an effort to have to go through and move all of the platform stop markers. So the other thing I'm going to do quickly is 
set up the Mill Hill East branch just because it won't take long and it's a bit different. Um, so L U N Mill Hill East to well, I kind of want to do Finchley Central to Mill Hill East. I want it to wait around at Finchley Central to 10.05 then we come in here, add some stops Finchley Central to Mill Hill East and back we're going to have the one train only need the one it's an interval time of 15 minutes I do believe Yeah. Apply. And then we open it. And there's the tray. I mean, I, I'm not 100% on whether these path signals are doing what I think they do, because they don't actually change colour. <laughs> but I'm pretty certain they work as I'm expecting. Obviously the way to tell would be to have a second line interfering with the first. So if I did the other line out of Edgware, or a line out of High Barnet, getting a load of interference at Camden Town. But there's, there's, yeah, this episode's already become quite lengthy, so I think I'll do that off camera and report back next time. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.